This was used as a shortening. It was toxic to the people who ate it. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, this is George the Antique Nomad and I am at the Burlington, Kentucky One Day Antique Show. It is finally back. This is the first show I've been to since the lockdown and I'm going to be doing my first show in an outdoor venue under a tent in Michigan on July 4th and 5th. So I'm looking for things to buy for that show and I'm also looking to see kind of how people are with this. Will they come out? what kind of protocols are there. I've walked through the show briefly once because I wanted to get an orientation before we started filming. And people seem like they're being pretty respectful and giving each other a little bit of room. I have a mask, I've kept it in my pocket the whole time because I was far away from everybody and it seems like it is working out just fine. So we'll just have it with us if we need it. But this is mainly outside. It looks like a lot of fun stuff and let's go take a look and show you what we find. I think let's go this direction and just sort of start at the beginning so we can keep track of where we've been. Okay, we'll try to give everyone a respectable distance, but I'm gonna go into the middle here first. Really, This is neat because um, we see a lot of the Ellie Smith glass, but this one has the hobnails and this one is it seems quite large but i've actually seen these pulled out or swung out as much as this much taller and i believe kanawha glass out of um, charleston west virginia may have made that it's priced at 65 if it had the longer stretch that would actually be reasonable because the really big ones go for over 100 now you can see there's a lot of people here today person on well we're considering it I mean George is having a sale this weekend and it uh, there's actually some youtubers that are gonna meet us there at the sale but they live relatively close by this is kind of fun it's an old Auburn truck but what's neat about it is it's got the State Automobile Insurance 1942 anniversary sticker on it. So this was probably given out as a promotion by them or else some little kid in 1942 got a hold of that sticker and thought it looked good on there. And it's Auburn Rubber Corp of Auburn, Indiana. They did a lot, they and Sun Rubber did a lot of rubber toys for kids back in that era. And rubber toys were something that didn't have any metal tabs or anything to cut you. Plus they were less expensive back then. The thing about them now is that the rubber tends to decay over time if it's uh, not stored in just the right way. So you really want to look to make sure it's not crackling and starting to dry out. And this one's in good shape and it is $18. Not a bad price really for what it is. Old metal banks. Oh, Denise lives 20 minutes from Auburn. Oh, wow. <laughs> George, we, George may have t-shirts soon. <laughs> I, I'm planning on it actually. A friend of mine sent me a design that I need to work into a t-shirt. Uh, let's see, so this is Nylok, which is out of Arkansas, and Nylok is kaolin spelled backwards, and kaolin is one of the main ingredients in clay. They did these molded wares in the 1930s, they originally made something called mission wear that was natural colors that swirled, and those pieces are pretty expensive. Uh, but then in the Depression, they switched over to the molded stuff because it was something they could make more easily and was affordable for people. These folks have pretty decent prices. I have to say I'm kind of heavy in pottery right now, so I'm going to keep looking and see what else there is. Oh, 
Oh, a nice pile of hooked rugs there. I'm going to let her have a chance to look through them first, and then we'll go take a look. We're trying to give everyone respectful distance here. A lot of these were made in the uh, 1930s and 40s especially, and people are really collecting them now. There's even uh, books that have been written about them. Do I like being the camera person? <laughs> I like it it's when he mostly, is. It's mostly good. <laughs> I don't really collect anything. I, uh, uh, electronic <laughs> camera gear, gear for YouTube. Yeah, this one's neat because of the um, lighthouse. It's got a lighthouse and a ship's lantern on it, and those are a little different things. And it's priced at 25. That's not a bad deal for something that's got something a little more unusual rather than just flowers and things. Good morning. Good morning. Those are really old hooks. Yeah, they're neat actually. You've got a nice selection. Yeah, that one is fun. It's an interesting uh, design. <laughs> flowers are more what we usually see with these. They're pretty though and they're really priced reasonably for what they are at around 25 apiece. If you're interested more in one or so, I can work with you on it. Okay, thank you. I'm, I may be actually. I'm kind of doing a first pass. Yeah, especially in nowadays. I think everybody has been trained by American Pickers and a lot of those Dr. shows. Lori. Dr. Laurie tells people to negotiate when something is 50 cents, which I frankly don't agree with. But yes, everybody is telling everybody to negotiate all the time. Here's the trade-off with that. The good thing is that, yes, it's fun to negotiate for a lot of people. The problem is, is that because everybody does it now, it means everybody has to price their merchandise up a little bit so that they can get what they need out of it. So it's really almost a fiction. In some ways, I wish people would just price it for what they want to sell it for and we all just pay the money or not because then you get into this whole, what's it really worth? It makes it harder as an appraiser and a collector to really know what the value of things are in some ways when everything is on sale all the time. That's a pretty Italian piece with the gold swirl in it. And it's nice the way they've controlled it so the gold all swirls into the middle and then pulled it out. And it's priced at 24, which is not a bad price at all, really. And then this, I see he has red dots for sale. And this is out of the 70s. I like any cocktail shaker that has recipes on it. This was the one that was made with the lid where instead of the little spout that always gets lost, you have this little piece here that comes off so you can actually pour from it. And I think for half price, I'm gonna take that. I like that. Oh, you know, I should look at your other table while you're wrapping that, thank you. The wall, the wall hangings are cute. Oh yes, these are all Royal Copley, and then this is uh, chalkware. A lot of companies made these with these figures setting on them about 1950, and I don't know who did this particular set, but those are neat. Oh look, Mackinac Island float pens. Mackinac Island is the place that Misty on Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter is always talking about because she loves it up there. It's her favorite place in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's the hotel that costs like $2,000 a night that she wants to stay in someday. <laughs> She'll have to keep making friends if all of us pitch in $10, maybe we'll get her there. Shields, huh, that's a company you don't see in cigarette cases and compacts as much as others. So I started this morning by doing a Periscope, and for those of you who don't know Periscope, you can sign into it using Twitter, Facebook, Google, or make a Periscope account. You can see it on your computer or your phone. It's basically a live streaming opportunity where it's just stream of consciousness. And the good thing is that you actually can use it on your phone or your computer, but it actually works better on the phone. So it's nice if you just have your mobile device with you, it's a good way to watch. And I have actually did Periscope before I ever did YouTube, so there's a bunch of archival footage as well if you like antiques and vintage like I do. I think this is really neat. It's a buggy seat. 
originally this would have been the spring and this is the equivalent of your shock absorbers nowadays and you would have sat up here and driven the horses and that would be it this is going to date any time from the late 1800s to early 1900s. It's priced at 195 and honestly they go for about that. Most people what they do is they put this up on a pedestal and they use these as benches in gardens now. And the last one I had I think was in better condition than this although this has neat old paint and I think I got 300 for that one. So they are collectible. So a lot of people wonder what these are when they see them from this side. And what they are are fire extinguishers that are worn as a backpack. So this would have been for a firefighter going into like the woods or some place where they didn't have fire hydrant and water service. This was something they could take with them so that they could do the extinguishing right there. And it also could have been used as a different kind of sprayer, but this particular one says it's for fire. So it's what they call a sling tank and it's a back operated. This is probably 1950s or 60s. It's $45. I actually see them priced higher generally. Firefighting collectibles are pretty desirable to people now. So Dr. Spock is no longer with us, but the no, photos Dr. are. Spock. So Mr. Spock is no longer with us. Neither is Dr. Spock. Uh, a lot of people collect Star Trek, and this one is uh, priced at $8. So this is pretty amazing, I think. I like horn furniture, and you don't see a whole lot of it. The Victorians really did it first. You see it out west, I believe, the lodge at Medora near the Teddy Roosevelt Park in North Dakota had this sort of furniture, and it became popular with wealthy cattlemen, primarily. And this piece, I would say, was probably done in the 1950s, looking at the style and the form of the tacking. It is all hide. It's not that you couldn't make something like this now, but it just would be cost prohibitive, I would think. I don't know what the price on this set is. I typically see sets like this go for several hundred, sometimes over a thousand. So we'll see if we can find out. So I talked to the fellow and he said that the set was 900, which is about what they usually run. This one is older. This one was done in the 40s as a child's chair and that's why it's got the nice vinyl, uh, or actually leather now that I feel it. Of course it's leather, it's from Texas. And this one is priced at 400. The horn furniture is just not common and for the people who love it, they really love it. So the prices are high and there's a reason. It sells for those prices. So antique clocks are something that have been really collectible for a long time and they have not been selling as well since the advent of the cell phone where everyone has their clock with them all the time now. But because of that, the prices are down and there's some really nice ones. This dealer's got quite a few. Uh, the old Victorian with the Hitchcock style painting here. And this is all hand painted as well. This would have originally been a lithophane like this with reverse painted glass, but that's been replaced, but it's only $100. This one's only 70, and it's got the pulleys in it that you can see from the top. This is actually quite old. It probably dates to about 1850 or 60, and you can see that it works. Most of these were made in Connecticut. That's where the big clock companies were, including Seth Thomas here. Now there was a time that that clock would have sold for double what this clock goes for, but these old regulator school clocks are things people recognize, so now they're selling for more than the fancy old ones. This one's $125, that's about what I'm seeing them go for these days, and that one's from probably the 19-teens. They used to sell for double that, so again, if you're a clock person, this is a good time to be a collector, or if you'd like to become one, it's a great time to start a collection. Yeah. That one would be considered a kitchen clock, and it looks like a lot of elaborate carving, but that's actually what they call press carved. They would take thin pieces of oak and stamp them using a heat and steam process to get that design. And kitchen clocks were always that style. It's got the nice bird and palm trees in the bottom there from the aesthetic period, so about 1890. Really a great deal for $60 in working order and he's got others here. He just sold this one for 50. I mean, that's a bargain price compared to what they used to go for. So if you like clocks, this is a good time to be looking. So while I'm thinking of it, 
Please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. This desk is a good example of signed Mission furniture, and Mission or Arts and Crafts was the first really modern American style. It was a reaction against Victorian gingerbreading and excessive carving and ornamentation, and so they would make these in workshops. They were mainly made by hand. Even these hand-hammered pieces have the detail of handwork. This one is a designer called Gustav Stickley, and Stickley Furniture, or the Stickley Brothers, is some of the most widely known and highly regarded of Mission Oak Furniture. There is a lot to be said for having a name. This piece is 975, and it is because it's Stickley, but at the peak of arts and crafts collecting 20 years ago, this would have gone for $1,000 more. So again, another thing that's starting to be more affordable for new people getting into collecting and it is a really amazingly solidly built piece that will outlast all of us. <laughs> I want to get in it and drive it away, but this old pedal car is really neat. It's one big piece of cast aluminum, and the old wheels look like 1950s. And I get the feeling this is something that somebody probably made. The look is that of an old race car from the 1930s or 40s, where you see the streamlining and they'd take everything off and just have the grill. And so this is definitely something that has some age. When I say I think someone made it, obviously someone did, but I think somebody who had access to aluminum molding made this as uh, maybe a one-off or a small production because I've never seen this. It doesn't have any pedals or anything so I think it may be just more like a coaster kind of racer. Nowadays people use them mainly for ornaments but I just thought that was a neat looking piece. Something I haven't seen before. This one looks like it's new old stock. It's got a 1953 date and the Union label but the thing about 7up when it says you like it, it likes you 7up was really having a hard time getting a footing in the marketplace and the it likes you refers to the fact that most people considered it a hangover cure when it first came out it was something you could drink and it would make you belch and then you felt better and so they really sold it with the idea it likes you as opposed to some sort of a dark caramel cola that maybe didn't like you so much so these are old chimney stacks, and there's a big variety. A lot of people would use them as garden sculpture and ornaments now, although you could use them to restore an old home. These are gonna to date to the 1890s to about 1910. A lot of the big companies, including Gladding McBean in California, made them, so some of them actually are connected to some of our dinnerware makers. And they're, they're just really neat looking, and they're priced between $85 and $100, which I think seems pretty reasonable for them. I have to admit, if, again, I'm finding all sorts of cool big things I don't have room for today, but these are pretty great. I like the old cool cigarettes. This has the Surgeon General warning on it, and so that's going to be probably in the last 25 or 30 years, that particular warning, but it's definitely bright. And they have a whole bunch of the old cool stuff, don't they? Free painter's cap with purchase of the carton of cool cigarettes. Huh free jacket. Boy, they've got a bunch of old stock. These are kind of neat. These are Pelham's puppets, and these um, were made in England. You'll see Disney versions. They're the most valuable. They can go for 35 or 40, but they were well made. They were actually something more for puppet shows than just for kids. And this one, sure enough, is Pinocchio inside. It's hard to find these not tangled and mangled, so this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'll have to find out about it. Ah, Cotyline Cotton Oil Company. This was used as a shortening. It was toxic to the people who ate it. That was before the Pure Food and Drug Act. It's still toxic. <laughs> yes, some people do say it's still toxic. Old galvanized tin bathtub is $225. That seems to be about the going rate on those. 
They're neat looking though. There was a time that that's what you had and you filled it with water and then once you got indoor plumbing, your horse drank out of it and that's why most of them aren't around anymore. <laughs> this looks like a mold for a big uh, industrial screw. These industrial molds are pretty popular with people doing them as art pieces or installations in industrial decor. It's funny, these were being thrown away when the industry shut down in this country 30 years ago or so, but they really are finding new homes. So it's amazing how inventive people are. Well, this show is monthly during the good weather and I can see where I'm gonna have to come back because it is vast. It just goes on and on. And there's just a ton of different things to see here. A lot of country and farm stuff, a lot of barn finds, a lot of signage and soda fountain items and those sorts of things and then you know you look in the next place and you're looking at glass and china and fancy things and pottery i mean it's quite vast i'm sure that there'll be a couple of things that'll just jump out in fact there's one right there that's kind of neat it is this old bell system box and what i really like is the old uh, decal logo on the front there and then these are old pump inserts from the 1960s when they started with the square tanks. So you've got regular and no lead and lead plus and non something that I can't quite read. Here's something clever that somebody's done that I haven't seen before though. They took two signs that were basically the same old road signs and they've cut them up and used them in a new way as a picnic table and chairs. And that's a pretty good look. And the thing is, you know this is durable. You can put anything on and nothing is going to hurt that. So actually a good medium for that sort of thing. Very clever. Golden orange aid with a funnel on it. That's gonna be an old soda fountain item from about 1920, I would say. And I imagine that you actually crushed and added something to it that way. It's a cooler. A cooler, okay. So they'd put the... I see, so they'd pour the orange in the top and then the bottom was all ice? I would say that this side molds up and looks just like a galvanized cooler. Yeah, neat. How much is that piece? 185. 185? That's actually not bad. It's an interesting yeah, one. I've never seen one. I haven't seen this exact one either, actually. There's the galvanized interior. And on the top it says Consumer Cooler Company, Chicago, USA. Yeah, that's pretty neat. It's a little worn, but I'll tell you, there's probably room in that price because that's really not something there's many left. I know those are from about 1970 because I sat in those same chairs in kindergarten. I remember them very well. They all stacked. Yeah, Verco. I think that was out of LA. I remember they would have us do the earthquake drills where we had to get under our desk and pull the chair in behind us, I guess, so they could identify us if something happened. This really seems like a lot of work for one day with so many dealers and so many people. I kind of wonder why they don't do this for multiple days. It just seems like there's so much to see. Ice cream parlor chairs there in good shape. 25 on the old sled's a pretty good deal too. Here we've got a pavilion with some shade. Let's see what they've got. There are certain things you really can't put out at an outdoor show. You're not going to see a lot of costume jewelry because any stones that are glued in, the glue will weaken and fall out if it's in the sun all day long, for example. You might need a practice for yeah. <laughs> if you're like me. When it comes to... Uh... They've got a bunch of these, and I'm seeing them around more. These banners were the sorts of things they did in the 50s for various gatherings, and this one's American Legion. Welcome, Legion. There is one long, skinny radio. Ah, I see. FM shortwave and microwave, <laughs> which really is AM. This one's going to be 
back when they had the little triangles to tell you where the civil defense stations were. So if there was an emergency, you'd turn to one of the two arrows and that would give you your emergency instructions. That was for in case the Russians dropped the bomb. They finally gave up on that in the 60s. So you can see there's a lot of people out and they seem to be really flocking to this event. I heard it was a very busy show and I can see why. It definitely has just a vast array of different dealers. I'd say probably two or three hundred and a lot of variety to see. So this is a fun place. I will definitely come back to Burlington, Kentucky for the monthly show during the summertime. So in the back, the sign that says Bicentennial Community is something that those of us who are old enough to remember the Bicentennial remember seeing on old towns. I think your town had to be either old enough to have been in the Bicentennial or be participating in some major event like the Freedom Train or something that was going around, and then you got that sign. I've got two, but I would keep it. Lots of old fire extinguishers, old ladders, lots of good solid furniture. There's just so much good furniture available right now. And the prices really are good. But I see a 70s lamp that I'm more interested in over here. And that is this chrome one, which is a sauna bend style from that era. Let's see what they have on that. 185 and it's got all six, yep. That's a pretty good price for those. I think I'm asking two and a quarter for the one I've got. Mm. This piece of Hager with the double Nautilus is a little different than you usually see. You usually see the single one that's like a cornucopia and it's got Royal Hager by Royal Hickman on the bottom. Royal Hickman was the man who the Royal and Royal Hager came after. Has nothing to do with the English royal family because these were all made in Dundee, Illinois. I'm curious to find out what they're asking for this one, so I'm gonna go see if I can find the proprietor. Let's see what this old auction sign looks like. Well, it's painted. So it's not brand new. And I think our friend the auctioneer might like this. I think I'll get this. Is this yours? Okay, I think I owe you $5. Well, thank you for joining me for this view of the Burlington Kentucky Antique Show. It's nice to have shows going again. And you can see a lot more of this on Periscope. Look for the link in the description. I did about another hour and a half of footage there so you can see even more of this show. In the meantime, I'm glad to have you with me. I'm George the Antique Nomad coming to you from Periscope here on YouTube every Monday and Wednesday now and on daily posts through Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So we'll see you again somewhere soon. Bye for now. Thanks. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!